It says, can a patient develop resistance to mestinon and can it become ineffective after many years of taking it? Um, I've seen folks uh, do well on mestinon for a while and then weeks or months later need an immunosuppressive medication. Uh, unusual for someone to be taking it and doing well for years and then the myasthenia to get worse and the mestinon doesn't work as well, um, but it can happen. Um, again, the immune system is very fickle. It, it never lets us know what, what it's got up its sleeve. You know, we never know what to expect at times. Another question, is it safe for a myasthenia patient to be around babies' children that have had their baby shots given to them? I hear you shed a vaccination through your skin. Are there any precautions for an MG patient? Um, we generally tell you to avoid getting sick or exposed to a virus in the wintertime, okay? Um, keep away from people that are coughing, wash your hands often. If a child is sick, don't babysit that child that day. Um, that's the ideal. In, in the real world, it happens. You get exposed to a virus. It doesn't mean if you get a virus that it's going to really do you in and you're going to be deathly ill. Um, often your immune system isn't, is, is not totally knocked out. It can still function and you may fight off the infection. But you may have a lot more trouble than the next person who is not on immunosuppressive uh, medication. So those are the general rules, I would say. And when we were having the, uh, the flu vaccines, you know, there were two types. There was a killed virus, which uh, if I remember correctly, was usually given by injection. And then there was the uh, weakened or live virus that was given by a, um, by a spray in the nose. And generally, if you're on immunosuppression medicine, at a reasonably good dose, you, get, you should get the killed vaccine shot, not the spray where it's the live virus, okay? Because then your body can um, develop an immunity to the virus causing flu that season from the killed virus, and you would eliminate the risk of the live virus going haywire if you got it by the nasal spray. Another question, is it possible to be positive for both acetylcholine receptor and anti-musk? Um, good question. I, I've never seen that, um, but I don't know if I have tested it all the time. Usually, the antibody tests are to see if your weakness is from myasthenia. It's, it's a test. In most of my folks, I do it once, I never do it again. If you're positive for the acetylcholine receptor, I don't check the anti-musk. Um, if you're negative, we could check the anti-musk just to see that that test confirms you have myasthenia. But we do treat people with myasthenia who are negative for both. And like Dr. McLeod said, there's some other antibody doing it. It's just that we can't detect it by the test that we have. How do you feel about the use of CELSEP in treating myasthenia? Um, I think it's helpful. What I like about CELSEP, I said earlier, it's fairly well tolerated. Knock on wood, I don't think any of my people on CELSEP have had bad reactions to it. But docs are arguing and, and other research is being done as to, gee, how, how well does it work? Um, just as a non-researcher, I think azathioprine or Imuran works better. But, you know, heck, there's those 10 to 15 percent of folks that get that bad reaction to the azathioprine that um, uh, I don't like. And if we've, we've used mestinon, if, we, if we've used prednisone, it's like that isn't really cutting it or you're on too high a dose of prednisone, we've got to cut down, but you're still having symptoms of myasthenia. Okay, we've got azathioprine, we've got Celsept, and I talk to folks about the, the, the pros and cons the risks and benefits of each. And lately, probably I've started more people on cell set to avoid that, that azathioprine reaction. What can I do to improve my swallowing and chewing difficulty? I'm taking 20 milligrams of prednisone once a day and 60 milligrams of pyridostigmine, which is mestinon. I'm assuming you're taking that 60 milligram tablet every four hours or so, not just once a day. It, it won't last if it's just once a day. I've had my myasthenia for 28 years. I can't take Imuran. 
Um, well, if you were really in having a lot of bad trouble, the prednisone could be increased for a while to a dose higher than 20 milligrams, 25, 30 milligrams a day. Uh, but once you're on a fairly high dose of prednisone, you can't be on that for years and years. So therefore, would you need a steroid sparing immunosuppressant drug? And then it'd be okay. Maybe that person would benefit from the cell set. We may need to keep the prednisone dose up a little high for a while because, like I said before, the prednisone may help you in a few weeks. The azathioprine in the cell set may take several weeks to, to a few months. Okay, so that's the hard part. Uh, and we never know uh, exactly when it's gonna kick in. So it makes it a little tricky with the treatment. My husband is the myasthenic and he just was uh, proved for rituximab, and his doctor said four treatments, and I noticed on your, your um, charts, you said two. Um, can you tell me the difference? And generally, it's given uh, intravenously uh, kind of in a, in a tandem. Uh, you get one injection, and then I think the second one is like a week or two later. And then you basically, and it knocks down uh, certain of the T cells, and you have to do uh, blood tests months down the road to see when they're coming up and rising up again. Uh, and, uh, and that may be maybe six months down the road where you check them again. And like in my patient, I checked, and they were still very low, so we had to hold off and wait. And uh, my understanding, well, the condition I'm treating for, you would give it only over about a two-year period. So I'm, when they're talking about the numbers, and, I, and I'm sorry, I didn't look at the details on that slide. Um, I don't know if they're counting two infusions as one treatment or two infusions as two treatments. But you give them a couple weeks apart and you repeat okay. them months down the road. And for the person I'm treating, you only, um, only treat over a couple year period. You don't do it on and on and on and on. Um, do you have any comment on that, Dr. McFarland? Um, yes, the <clears throat> rituximab was um, originally developed and licensed as a treatment for a, a cancer of the lymphocytic system, a B cell cancer. And in that application, I believe the standard course of therapy is for, for uh, infusion spaced in a particular way. So there's a vast amount of uh, experience in using it that way, um, the toxicity that arises from it. So people doing a study may have chosen to uh, mimic that method of administration just because there's so much experience with it. Is there any other uh, drug or pr process that you can follow that would help uh, respiratory problems? If somebody mainly has problems with the, with the breathing, uh, of course, the other question always is, um, do they have heart trouble? Do they have emphysema or COPD or uh, things like that? And often we have to work together with their doctors to come up with, gee, does it seem to be the myasthenia that's going on? And uh, like you mentioned about exercise, when I showed you that safety factor, in myasthenia, repeated muscle contractions could lead to weakness and fatigue. And Exercise is good. We like everybody to get up and about as best as they can, but uh, you know, working out or doing exercises aren't going to make that neuromuscular transmission better if you've got myasthenia. So just to think, oh, I'm going to sign up for the gym and do this or that is going to get me stronger, um, I try to tell people, don't assume that. We've got to make the myasthenia better for you. Do whatever exercise you can comfortably do, but don't, don't get hurt. Um, if you're getting treated um, and, you're, and you're getting short of breath, uh, sometimes uh, we can get the respiratory uh, folks to give you some positive pressure through an oxygen mask. It's what you hear about people with sleep apnea taking at, at, at nighttime when they're asleep. Uh, it may help your breathing, assist your breathing a little bit when you're laying in bed if you're having a lot of trouble at night. Um, 
the, of course, if, if breathing is a big problem for somebody with myasthenia, that gets me really, really nervous because one of the worst scenarios is when you can't breathe on your own. Um, what I generally tell folks is if you feel that's really getting worse, you call 911 and get to the emergency room. If you're put on a mechanical ventilator because your breathing really got bad, that's okay. You know, we've got several things to do to try and get you better. Uh, don't give up the ship. And the things that will work the quickest, as you've heard, when you're in the hospital can be the plasmapheresis or the IV immunoglobulin. And uh, you know, a lot of us would perhaps pick the plasmapheresis unless there was a problem for the patient getting that, uh, if, if they're really getting weak and in trouble. Um, so it, it, it all depends. We may have you um, measure your, your ability to uh, blow a certain volume of air with your lungs and looking at certain numbers, uh, listening to your story. Okay, so if, if you're having trouble breathing, it's like, well, are you having trouble breathing when you're, you know, uh, walking on the golf course on the 16th hole, okay? Or are you having trouble breathing just as you're washing your face? There's a big difference. Um, if it's just on the golf course, maybe we can adjust your medications and we've got a little time. If, if you're just getting up for the day and you're having trouble breathing, then maybe we should get you one of these quick treatments to get you over the hump. Because these other immunosuppressive drugs take a while to work. That's the problem. And as Dr. McLeod said, you know, the phoresis is pretty darn quick. So those are my thoughts on it. And again, it's a little, it varies from person to person. Does plasma phoresis affect the white blood cell count at all? Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't rem it may remove a few white cells. A few of them go along with the plasma, but um, not enough to make a, a perceptible difference. It's plasma phoresis is actually less immunosuppressive than uh, most other things that people do for immunosuppression. They're less of a tendency to um, have a susceptibility to infections and so forth, and much less than prednisone. But again, uh, we, we would just pick whatever treatment would suit you best, how aggressive you want to be. You've got to know the side effects we're dealing with. And, and make that decision with your doc and, and, and see over time. But people will struggle a lot, and usually years down the road, things will finally, 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 you know, get a little more settled down. 